I'm just as excited as the next guy for Drew Aller to take over as the Penn State starting quarterback, but we need to be concerned about the quarterback room. You are locked on Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Nittany Lines your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And today's episode is sponsored by LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your 2023 goals. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. My name is Zach Seiko and... This is a look at the 2023 quarterback room for Penn State. Do they have what it takes to go through the full season? And I'm here to say at this point in time, at the end of January, before, uh, you know, winter workouts have taken off and spring ball and everything else are still yet to come, summer camp, fall camp, of course, there should be concern with this quarterback room. (laughs) And I know let's let's have this discussion in the comments, right? But uh, hear me out first, okay? Because the quarterback room... It's insanely talented, but it's a lot of raw talent. So we're going to discuss Drew Aller, Bo Perbula, Jackson Smolik in the first segment here, and then get into Penn State men's basketball and address some Micah Shrewsbury news. Adam Sheets joins me in the upcoming two segments to wrap up this edition of Locked on Nittany Lions. But the quarterbacks, Sean Clifford, Drew Aller, Christian Bayer, Bo Perbula. That was a really good quarterback room from a season ago. And then you go to Aller, Prabula, and Smolik. This should be concerning because there's no more veteran presence in the quarterback room. And I know what you're thinking, Drew Aller and Bo Prabula, where they're now the veterans. Okay, um, that that's two years of experience. They're entering their second season. Um, that That's really tough to say, but yes, they are in fact the veterans. Was, was one year of Sean Clifford uh, enough to mold a young Drew Aller and a Bo Prabula. Maybe, maybe it was. We, we're going to have to find out. And, and I think that Drew has all the talent in the world. I'm not to sit here and criticize, but there will be growing pains. And, and what happens when he runs into his first obstacle? How are the fans going to react? Uh, how's Drew going to react? That real first test is against Illinois on the road come week three. And, and that's going to be as tough as the challenges they come because Illinois was was top 15 once upon a time. Brett Bielema is a really good coach with Big Ten experience. Um, and that's on the road. I, I'm not going to – West Virginia, I think that's a win. Uh, but Illinois is going to be that first tough test. So you're going from six years of experience in one quarterback in Sean Clifford to, uh, and with a capable backup as well in Christian Veyer, somebody else that had experience to a player with late in game experience in Drew Aller. And, and he's only a true sophomore. Bo Perbula doesn't have any in game experience. Jackson Smolik is straight out of high school, but it, this is, This is what you're going from. So uh, let's examine. So this is what you're getting in Drew Aller. And this is why we're going to go through the quarterback room because I think Drew Aller is the starter, like a capable starter. I think he's what ultimately helps this team get past that, that bar that, that has been set that well, 10 and two, it's good enough. No, they 11 and one, 12 and oh, that is the goal. And, And Drew Aller is that missing piece because Penn state's had all these good teams, But now, where is that true pro-style quarterback? And here he is, former five-star, top-rated quarterback commit, depending on where you looked. You know, he was consistently in the top three in all of the country. What are the pros about Drew Aller? You love the size, six foot five, 240 pounds. I love his pocket presence. For someone that is as big as he is, he that ability to move within the pocket to maneuver the way he does is very impressive. Arm strength that that's not a question. Somebody who can he he has more arm strength than Sean Clifford, and he's five years younger than Sean Clifford. So I, I think he's only going to get uh, more speed on his fastball, better deep ball uh, as the years come, and, and confidence. You want someone that is confident. He trusts in his receivers. We saw that even in the late game experience, and even when he had that little spotlight in Purdue. He was not afraid to to trust his receivers in double coverage. But here are the weaknesses. Yes, Drew Aller has weaknesses. Um, I, I don't want to sit here and be a Drew Aller apologist, um, even though I'm, I'm really excited for him. I really am. But he can be wild at times. 
there there were some instances uh, against Purdue against some other opponents where it's just like okay where was that pass going so I I hope that when he starts to throw 40 50 times a game is that going to be a consistent issue where he might be a little inaccurate um, because I think he can drop the ball in the bread basket at any point in time, but there's sometimes when he tries to put a little too much zip on those out routes and, and, and those seam passes when the window shuts really fast, it's just like that was a wobbler. And we saw that particularly against Purdue uh, and a little bit against Michigan when he came in in garbage time and it, it's on the tape. It's there. So hopefully he can correct that. And, and we don't know how composed he's going to be in big game moments. So West Virginia will be a small test, but it will be a test. Um, and, and West Virginia is going to come in fired up. We know that. And then Illinois. Illinois is the big one because Illinois thinks it belongs in the top 25. Illinois thinks it can contend for the Big Ten West. Um, they are a very good defensive team, and they were one of the best secondaries from a season ago. How's Drew Aller going to handle that? Uh, in that case, and there's going to be more. There's the Michigan game. There's on the road against Ohio State. Uh, the whiteout, it, it's not set in stone, but I think the whiteout game is going to be Iowa earlier in the season. So is he going to be ready for those larger-than-life moments? Uh, and, and that's the test. On to Bo Prabula, who's going to be quarterback number two at this point in time. Uh, Bo Prabula, the pros, uh, good size as well. He, he's a bigger player. Everybody compares him to Trace McSorley. He's bigger than Trace McSorley, okay? Six foot two, 200 pounds, and I think he'll get bigger. Uh, he's essentially built like a linebacker playing quarterback, okay? Another strength, uh, he's mobile, very mobile, and that's where he draws the McSorley comparisons. Bo Prabula is, is a dual-threat quarterback, and, and is that different dynamic than Drew? Drew's going to be a pocket passer. Bo can tuck it and run and can run through people. He's instinctive. This is something that I've heard time and time again when you ask about Bo Prabula. Hey, what's the next guy like? The two things. He's instinctive. Like, he just gets football. He just under he just instinctively knows what to do. And that's what Trace McSorley had. Uh, he also has the it factor. It, there's no way to describe it. He just, he was a winner in high school. He just has the it factor. And, and that's what sets him apart. So, and, and with the good comes the bad. Lack of experience is one. You know, he doesn't, he's only been in the program for one year. He's redshirted. Um, how would he do if he was thrust into action? He's a developmental player. So with all the talent in the world, it's still very raw. That's why they gave him the red light. Uh, that's why he's behind Drew Aller on the depth chart. Uh, he's a developmental guy that you don't want to have to see on the field just yet. And, and if he's, is he ready if Drew can't go? Drew, I, I hope he starts 12-plus games for Penn State this upcoming season. But is Bo Prabula ready to go? Even if Drew needs to take a few plays off, he needs to take a drive off. Uh, there was that question mark when Sean went out of the game a year ago when Taquan and Christian Veyer had to go in. When Will Levis had to go in at points in time. Can Bo Prabula do that if he has to you know, be a relief pitcher at points in time? On to Jackson Smolik. Jackson's going to be QB number three at this point. Uh, that's obviously no question. He's six foot two, 200 pounds, so similar size to Bo Prabula. He's a three star per 24 7 sports, and he's the number 34 quarterback overall nationally. Early enrollee. That is, that is as huge as it gets because now you can at least have him understand the playbook, get in the weight routine, get in the weight room and get into like a college athletic program, get him on the same program as everybody else. Um, as far as his pros, because we don't know much about him at the college level, personality and work ethic. I've heard a lot of good things about uh, Jackson Smolik and just what kind of player he is. He just carries himself very well for someone who's transitioning from high school to college. He's intelligent and he is accurate. He's just a good decision maker. Uh, and he has tight spirals on his throws and gets them to where they need to go. Cons, obviously arm strength. Um, he, he's just going to have to develop that at the next level. He doesn't have the fastest throw in the world. No experience, but being an, old, uh, an early enrollee definitely helps that. And he's going to need time to develop. Um, if, if Jackson Small exceeds the football field this year, that means things have gone terribly wrong for Penn State. So the quarterback room, yes, I'm concerned because there's the lack of a veteran presence. And what happens? What's the contingency plan? Because we can't assume that Drew Aller is going to be available 24-7. I want them to get a veteran in the transfer portal. Why did Ohio State do it? If they got Kyle McCord and Devin Brown, why did they go get a seventh-year senior 
in that Oregon State quarterback in Tristan Jebya. Okay. If Ohio State, Ohio State's doing it and they have more experienced quarterbacks. Michigan did it, and JJ McCarthy is fresh off a college football semi, a college football playoff semifinal, right? They went and got Jack Tuttle from Indiana. If Christian Veyer happens to stick in the fold and says, this is the life for me, this isn't an issue. But Christian Veyer sees himself as a starter, and that's fine. Uh, Drew Aller, all the talent in the world. I get it. Bo Previula, a raw talent who I think will take over when Drew goes to the NFL. I'll sit here and say that. However, uh, when I say I want a veteran, I just want someone who can come in and continue to push these kids, help educate them. Uh, th yeah, that's what the coaches are for. That's what Mike Yersich and James Franklin are for. But there's nothing like a player's experience. That's why Sean Clifford this past year was invaluable passing the torch to Aller and Prabula. Uh, and there's no shame in having quality depth. There is no shame. Remember in 2021, Penn State was a top five team and Sean went down against Iowa and Penn State had no answer with take one and Christian Bayer. Yeah, he came in against Rutgers, but if Christian was as good as he was supposed to be, why didn't he go in against Iowa? So there is no shame with wanting better backup quarterbacks and other guys that can just build the quarterback room up, enhance the competition, uh, enhance the development, and have a contingency plan in case things don't go according to that plan. It is Locked On Nittany Lions. We're talking some Penn State men's basketball with Adam Sheets coming up next. Today's episode is sponsored by FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are here, and we're really excited for our new sports betting partner of Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, and that is FanDuel. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. There are so many great features that make sports betting easy and fun. New customers join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet so you just sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on fanduel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props plus you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay all on an app that's safe secure and super easy to use so football fans don't miss out place your first five dollar bet to get 150 dollars in free bets Win or lose at fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back to Locked On Nittany Lines. My name is Zach Seiko, your host, and joining me once again is special guest Adam Sheets, Penn State men's basketball insider. Before we get into the blowout victory over Michigan, Adam, Locked On is heading to the Senior Bowl. Get inside analysis from the host that covered the NFL's next generation in college and find out what NFL draft boards these players will be climbing. All in one spot, subscribe to Locked On NFL Draft for nightly live shows from the Senior Bowl on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So that is Locked On NFL Draft. Go subscribe. If you haven't already, subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lines as well. Shameless plug. <laughs> Adam, thanks for thanks for coming back onto the show. We're going to do two segments today because I, I feel like we should address some rumors in the final segment of the show surrounding Micah Shrewsbury. The Athletic broke this, uh, and we'll, we'll get into all that. That's how we're going to tease it. But let's focus on the present because even though I've said that Penn State's not an NCAA tournament team, I've jumped off that bandwagon. But with a win like this over Michigan, you have to feel pretty good about the situation. So 83 to 61, you saw the game in person. I, I got to watch it, but it just felt like Penn State, whatever shot it wanted to take, it made it. Uh, they made Michigan. It, they, Michigan was just miserable offensively, so Penn State's defense responded. But your initial reaction seeing that game live and how it unfolded? I thought they played awesome. I thought it was one of their better games of the season, maybe the most complete game they have played all season on offense and defense. This game really changed at about the five minute mark in the first half. It was 31 to 30, really close game. Both teams kind of battling. Jet Howard was playing really well for Michigan. Jalen Pickett was carrying the load for Penn State early. And then Penn State with Pickett, mostly on the bench during this run, went on an 18 0 run to lead 49 to 30. Michigan would score right before the half to make it 49 32. That really 
open the game wide open for Penn State. Miles Dreadhead shots. Mikey Hen hit two threes, two big threes for Penn State. Andrew Funk got going. That really helped them open up that lead. And then the second half, Seth Lundy really started to carry the load, Get really, got really hot, ended with around 23 points. He played really well in that second frame. Jalen Pickett was great, as always, with 25, 8, and 8. Andrew Funk added 19. And everyone really contributed in big ways. Coach Shrewsbury made a change, you know, in the starting lineup, putting Michael Hen and Caleb Dorsey in the starting lineup in place of Cameron Winter and Keba Jaya difference. And, you know, a lot of people said, how does Michigan even prepare for that? I mean, no one really saw that coming with those two entering the starting lineup. So it was definitely great chess match here between Jawan Howard and Coach Micah Shrewsbury. And Coach Shrewsbury did a great job keeping Michigan on their heels, making them play on Penn State's terms. That's what helped them get the win at home and move to 11-1 and inside the Bryce Jordan Center. Yeah, talk about home court advantage. Uh, they're 14-7 and seven now overall. They're 5-5 five and five in the Big Ten. Uh, and Michigan just... Uh, I mean, it showed, right? Because you have Mikey Hen in there and you have Caleb Dorsey at the same time. Hunter Dickinson had six points and just, what was it, two rebounds, three rebounds? I mean, he he was a complete non-factor. I, I love the chance from, I hope you participated in them as well, overrated to, yeah, to I Hunter heard Dickinson. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say if you were a culprit in that, no. I, <laughs> uh, but I... And I love the phrase that uh, on social media that uh, Micah Shrewsbury uh, more plays than Broadway, which, mm-hmm. which is clearly the case because you bring that chess, uh, you, that chess battle back and forth between Juwan Howard and Micah Shrewsbury. And I feel like it's no contest. Like it's no competition. Micah Shrewsbury is that much better of a coach. And that's why Penn State is even in the position it's in. Yeah, there's some good, talented players, but the fact that they're a fringe bubble team is just how good of a coach Micah Shrewsbury is. Yeah, he's done a great job coaching this team. You know, he's adjusted, and I think that's the big thing you could say about Coach Shrewsbury and what he's done with these guys. Last year, he didn't have the team that's going to shoot a lot of threes. He had to be really slow-paced, play on the defensive side with guys like John Harris, and they were able to do that and win some games and be very respectable in, in a lot of close games last season. This season, it's very different. They're a small team, don't have John Harris in the middle. They have a lot of great shooters, very skilled players, and they play to that. They play a lot quicker now. They take a lot more threes, and that's what helped them become more of an offensive team this season. So I think that's the biggest thing you could say about Coach Shrewsbury. He's a guy who's willing to adjust, play to the strengths of his team, and now as he goes on here, being able to build a program and be able to find guys now to play the system he truly wants to play, we'll find out what that is. I think he wants to play more of this fast pace with more shooters, and he's trying to do that with his recruiting classes coming in. But he's done a great job, and he outcoached Dewan Howard. I think a lot of Michigan fans will agree with you that Micah Shrewsbury is a way better coach than Dewan Howard. They are not happy. They've kind of seen regression there since he's taken over for Coach Beeline and, you know, trying to figure that out. But Penn State had a great game plan especially against Hunter Dickinson, completely limiting him. I mean, Hunter Dickinson, he was a little, you know, he did take on Zach Eady for a long time on Thursday, short turnaround to go to the Bryce Jordan Center. So fatigue yeah. could have been a question for him. But Penn State had a great game plan, doubled it, took it out of his hands, and played really well. And outside of Jet Howard, Michigan really couldn't get shots to fall. So great game plan by Coach Shrewsbury and this staff and able to get the win. They won it starting with coaching, and then the players executed a great game plan. Adam, what do you think the the public call out did for this team? Because Micah Shrewsbury, uh, a very fiery guy, like he'll go to bat for his players. I, I like seeing him uh, just just go up to the referees and let them know when they get it wrong and everything. Uh, be vocal in the press conferences, but this time around, he said, "You know, look, our defense isn't getting the job done. You know, you can go listen to his words and what he said verbatim. I'm obviously giving you just a simple Reader's Digest, but in short, he called his players out. What do you think that did for the team?" I think it woke him up because, you know, Mike is a guy, he said this actually to open his press conference after the win today, that he's honest with his team. You know, when it's time to call him out, he's going to call him out. Now, he did mention that he's the guy who gets to call him out when someone from outside their program calls him out or starts talking about him. He's going to defend his program 100% because he loves these guys. But, yeah. you know, he was really honest about it, that they weren't playing defense, which I think truly bothered him because he's naturally a defensive guy. That's where, you know, he got his calling. That's what he did for Brad Stevens when he was at Butler, his first go around 
at Purdue, was a defensive guy, did a lot of defense with the Boston Celtics, then really took over the offensive stuff when he went back to Purdue before landing the Penn State job to become a full, well-rounded coach. But defense is what he truly likes. That's his passion. And, you know, it really bothered him that his team was not playing to their standard. And he felt like it was necessary to call them out on that. They're a veteran team. They knew how to handle it. He believed they could handle it and then bounce back in the way they did today. So their defense was amazing. They did a lot. Outside of Jet Howard, did not allow anyone to really hurt them. And I think that was huge for this team because that's what they need because they shot the ball really well today, which helped them score 83 points. When the ball is not going in, need to have that defense there to keep them in games. So eventually, maybe if they get hot late in a game, that stretch could help them maybe pull out wins. But their defense was phenomenal today. Credit to Coach Shrewsbury for calling them out and getting them ready to go. Yeah, 61 points against a Michigan team that can score. I I mean, um, I I was surprised when Penn State opened up as a minus three favorite and ultimately uh, was a minus four when the game started. But uh, Vegas was all over that uh, and they did expect a lot of scoring here. I mean, Jalen Pickett, another near triple double, 25, eight and eight, eight rebounds, eight assists. Seth Lundy had 22 points. Andrew Funk had 19. I, I still think Andrew Funk is the X factor because Michigan it just felt like they were chasing their tails that they were just running in circles, trying to contain this kid, following him around. And it just opens up so much more when you're running just to get this guy free. And it feels a lot like I'm not saying that Andrew Funk is Clay Thompson, but when I watch Andrew Funk have screens set up for him and Michigan has to, again, just chase him everywhere. That's essentially what Clay Thompson does a lot offensively for the golden state warriors. They open up screens off ball screens for him to go around and get open in the corner, get open at the top of the arc in Andrew Funk's case, because that's his favorite spot. But it, it really does so much more when Michigan is distracted by just one guy who can shoot when he is on. Well, that's what hurt them early because they came out with a man-to-man defense to try to guard Penn State with that philosophy, and they were trying to take Andrew Funk away. That allowed Jalen Pickett to score 17 quick points in the first half. He completely took over to start the game, and then Michigan had to switch. They went a little more zone to try to keep Jalen Pickett out of the middle because Kobe Bufkin, a little bit of an undersized Doug McDaniel as well, undersized guards that Jalen Pickett was able to attack inside. Now they switch to a zone, and that opens up guys like Andrew Funk to be able to knock down those shots. There was one set Andrew Funk starts getting it going Jalen Pickett obviously had the hot first half where Jalen Pickett got a switch with Hunter Dickinson they ran a little flare screen for Andrew Funk pop into the wing he ended up wide open for a three when he's shooting the ball that way Jalen Pickett's got it going they're nearly unguardable so he's that x factor because when he's not shooting the ball well they're able to pack it in really hurt Jalen Pickett who's trying to create for his teammates so it was a great job by Andrew Funk to stay in rhythm get those shots and he's very important for this team's success because they're going to live by that three he's the catalyst of that the best shooter on this team. Adam Sheets, Pennsylvania men's basketball insider for Penn State's Com Radio is here on Locked on Nittany Lions. My name is Zach Seiko. When we come back, we'll address those Micah Shrewsbury rumors because when things get going good, now it sounds like uh, the house of cards is going to come tumbling down. Let's address those rumors next, Adam. Welcome back to Locked on Nittany Lines. I am Zach Seiko, your host, joined by special guest Adam Sheets, Penn State men's basketball insider, and Micah Shrewsbury. Could he be out after two years at Penn State? And no, it's not because the Nittany Lions want to move on. They want him around. It's because Notre Dame could be calling, and, and this is this is interesting. This isn't just any old job. This this is sentimental for Micah Shrewsbury uh, in the sense it's it's his home state, right? He's from Indiana. He's uh, born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana. I uh, coached at Purdue, obviously had two stints, uh, and he, he's just been in that Indiana area for quite some time. Mike Bray's retiring at the end of the season. He's a legendary head coach, even though Notre Dame hasn't really been um, – just, just as competitive as of late, I would say, in the past five years, even the de- past decade. I just remember in the late 2000s how good they were. Mm-hmm. Um, and this would be probably a home – I mean, this is, this is not probably. This is a home run hire for the Fighting Irish if they are able to pull this off to get Micah Shrewsbury uh, in the fold. And, and and how could you not want Micah Shrewsbury? Like he, A lot of programs are going to see him as an up-and-coming head coaching candidate for these big-name programs. So – Adam, what what feel did you get? The Athletic kind of broke this rumor that at least at Notre Dame's interested. Let's just say that Notre Dame is very interested in going and getting Micah Shrewsbury. So just what do you know? What are your feelings about this? 
uh, because it does make me a little nervous that Micah Shrewsbury after two years would, would want that because there's so much that, that that's his home. That's his home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know where Mike is at. Obviously, he has Braden Shrewsbury, his son, committed to Penn State right now. Right. So I don't know how much that's and he's locked in. Him. His letter yep. of, intent, of intent is signed. Yeah, he's signed. So he's at least there for one year with Penn State, whether Coach Shrewsbury is there or not. I remember when the news broke that Mike Bray was retiring, I was talking to the people, and immediately I said, I think Mike is going to be a candidate for this job because he's such a great coaching candidate, because of what he's done at Penn State, and of course the Indiana ties. I've heard some rumors now also if Georgetown would move on for Patrick Ewing, they would look at Mike Shrewsbury as well. Obviously not as many ties there to Georgetown as there are for Notre Dame with the Indiana ties, but you know, Mike is obviously a great coach. I don't know where he once obviously Penn State doesn't really reveal contract salaries and thing what number he's making at Penn State versus what Notre Dame would get him there's obviously pros and cons to every hire Notre Dame obviously at home knows Indiana knows how to recruit that state a lot of great basketball talent in the state of Indiana so he could look at that as a plus but negative obviously Notre Dame they have you know very high academic qualifications and ways they like to handle their recruiting as well so sometimes hard to win we saw Brian Kelly with the football program leave to go to LSU for similar reasons with recruiting, being able to build a program with less restrictions down at LSU to what Notre Dame has. So there are pros and cons. I think he's going to be a big candidate in this race. I don't know. Micah has not commented on these rumors. No one's asked him about these rumors yet. But when we finally see, you know, dust comes to settle, this team does what they're capable of by the end of the season when they start maybe looking at that. Don't know if Mike Bray might already have his assistant maybe lined up, maybe who he wants to take it. But obviously, Mike is going to be a big candidate as this search goes on. I'm going to tell you the X factor here, Adam, and I know you're going to agree with me here. And it's not his son. It's not Braden Shrewsbury because you can get released from a letter of intent. Um, Mm -hmm. And if Micah were to leave, Braden would follow him. That's the, that's the point here. So don't think, well, he's signed in. So he's going to stay at least one more year with his son. No, Uh, you can, they'll work, they'll work (laughs) around a a piece of paper, unfortunately. Um, But here's, here's the X factor. It's Pat Kraft. It, it, it is it is Pat Kraft and being the new AD because I, I think under Sandy Barber, I know Sandy brought Micah in, but things are run a little differently at, at Penn State now when it comes to athletics. And the big thing is money. So if Pat Kraft is willing to sit down with Micah Shrewsbury and say, hey, I believe in the men's basketball program because at Penn State, it is football Football, football. I know how popular wrestling is. I I know what the men's hockey program does. But at Penn State, it is football, football, football. With the new Big Ten contract, the new TV deal, and that injection of cash flow into Penn State, is Pat Kraft going to sit down and say, we have some more available funds to make sure that you get the most support in your program, that you personally get the most support that you feel that you need and and something that we can ultimately keep you happy. So if Pat Kraft is willing to have that conversation, and I think he is because I think he's more interested in just building a football powerhouse. Yeah, I think, you know, that's a big thing. Pat Kraft was asked about this after the regular season for football was done. He had a press conference and he was asked about Micah Shrewsbury and how they're going to be able to keep him, obviously, with him being probably a hot candidate for a lot of other jobs. And he said he was willing to do whatever it takes. He loves Coach Shrewsbury, what he brings to Penn State and thinks he's a great coach and wants to keep him. So he said that now, obviously, if this all comes true and maybe he's looking at going towards Notre Dame, there's obviously going to be decisions to be made. Now he's going to have to put his money where his mouth is almost literally and make sure he's able to keep coach Shrewsbury at Penn State but there's a lot like you said it's football at Penn State first everyone knows that it's very similar at Notre Dame if you look at athletics at Notre Dame football comes first there as well so you know there's going to be a lot of things that's going into this decision specifically with that Notre Dame job how aggressively Notre Dame pursues Micah Shrewsbury and how Pat Kraft reacts and tries to make sure he's able to keep coach Shrewsbury if that's the guy he wants to desperately keep here at Penn State. And I think I think Micah Shrewsbury is going to entertain the offer, a- mm-hmm. and why not? You know, if you get the chance to go back to your home area, if you get to go uh, the chance, and, and Notre Dame, a- at least, like I said, in the past, the way that men's basketball was treated was a lot different. So it the true X factor here is Pat Kraft. Is he going to continue the trend, or is he gonna is he gonna buck the trend here and break it and, and really put an emphasis on men's basketball because that's what it's going to come down to. Because I think that Butler, if you told me Butler's job was opening up, Micah Shrewsbury would be a candidate for that and a legitimate one because Butler focuses on men's basketball entirely. 
They are completely interested in men's basketball and are willing to throw more dollars around to go get their guy. So, but it'll be yet to be seen. I, I do have a feeling that there's going to be conversations had and, and Penn state fans are just going to have to hope for the best here uh, that he's going to stick around with the Nittany lions, because I really don't know who would be an ideal candidate to come into Penn state, especially what Mike has done in two years. Mike has really been a glue, the glue to keep this program together uh, since Pat chambers was let go. Mm -hmm. And then Jim Ferry ultimately took over for one season. Uh, Adam, before I let you go, your thoughts on Purdue, can the same game plan work uh, that Penn state used against Hunter Dickinson in Michigan? Can they carry that over? Go Mikey Hen and Caleb Dorsey at the same time, and maybe Keba Jai as well, because they have a similar seven foot plus type of guy in Zach Eady. I know Purdue's obviously a lot better in the backcourt, so it's not going to be that black and white, but here we are. Do you think, do you expect to see more of the same against Purdue in terms of game plan? I think it's going to be very similar. I thought they had a good game plan the first time they played them. They just, I don't think, executed it, and they missed some shots in the second half when they played them at the Palestra. Could be very tough to win. Zach Eady had 38-13 and 13 today against Michigan State, so he's obviously going to be a force to be reckoned with in this game, but they're going to have to play it kind of the way they did today, probably doubling down, putting two bigs in the game more often and trying to take Zach Eady away, make other guys beat them. Obviously going to be tough because they do have a lot of great shooters at Michigan, at Purdue, especially in that back court it's going to be a very interesting matchup obviously coach Shrewsbury knows Purdue very well knows that program so he ought, nor, normally has a good game plan against them we'll see if Penn State's able to execute that in a tough environment to play Mackey's one of the toughest places to play in the country and especially in the Big Ten ESPN's given them an 87 percent chance Purdue that is to to win that game outright and that's Wednesday February 1st 6 30 tip off as you mentioned out in West Lafayette Adam thanks again as always and I think that's the job that Micah Shrewsbury truly wants uh, is the Purdue job but again since it's South Bend uh, Notre Dame could be uh, the calling card here but thanks again for your insight and your perspective as always Adam and where can people keep up with your work at Sheets Adam on Twitter, where you can find everything you need about this Penn State basketball team moving forward as they're still marching towards an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament. All right. He's Adam Sheets, the Penn State men's basketball insider. Adam, can't wait for our next conversation. Thanks again. Yep, can't wait. Thanks for having me. Thanks again for making Locked On Nittany Lines your first listen every day. You got to check out the brand new show, and that is Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Plus, you get to hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. That is Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for joining me on Locked On Nittany Alliance. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Help us push to 900 in the offseason, 900 subscribers on YouTube. Comment any feedback you'd like about the Micah Shrewsbury rumors, about the quarterback room, and these position groups. We're going to continue to devote segments to uh, a position group in review, how they did the season before, and then what Penn State is going to look like in 2023. So leave a comment about how you think the quarterbacks will turn out in 2023 uh, as well. And with that being said, more Penn State football and men's basketball content are on the way as the Nittany Lions are going to try to fight for that NCAA tournament berth. And we got to review the position groups for Penn State. And it'll all be right here on Locked On Nittany Lions.